absolute joy to have you with us tonight. Short kick, Williams from the 12. Big hole. Williams down the sideline and pushed out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Talk about shocking the house. He <laughs> nearly took it to the house. He sure did, and speed, the speed to burn. This play was so well blocked. Look at the blocking down the field, and Williams, he's not even touched, so he gets 40, 50 yards down the field. Fortunately for South Carolina, someone was back there to bump him out of bounds and save a touchdown. 53-yard kickoff return. So Garrick McGee likes what he sees. It's first and 10 for UAB. They spot the football at the Gamecocks 35-yard line. Jonathan Perry coming up under center. Greg Franklin is the setback behind him. Play action and rolling, and it's complete to Franklin. Misses one tackle. He's got a first down at the 24-yard line. So UAB comes out firing, and Jonathan Perry is your Toyota quarterback. Perry had a nice, nice week last week against Troy. He threw for over 300 yards in that loss, but this is an offense that's going to try to create mismatches, and they do that by getting into a lot of different formations, a lot of shifts and motions. They want to try to get one-on-one -on -one with the running back on a linebacker, things like that. So you'll see a lot of different things from this offense. And an injured player for the Gamecocks. And that injured player is Reginald Bowens, the middle linebacker, the senior from Holly Springs, North Carolina, was also dinged up in the Vanderbilt game. Take a look at him on the right side of the screen right here. He just gets the peelback block by number 12, Nick Adams. A clean block, just trying to throw a block for Franklin down the field, but looks looked to be a block right in the chest, maybe in the stomach area, maybe just had the wind knocked out of him. We'll see what the trainers say. Well, Tim, to say the least, this is not what 80,000 here at williams Price expected to start this game. No, absolutely not. The last thing you want to do is uh, start the game by giving up a big play on special teams and then have your middle linebacker go down on the first play from scrimmage. Now sitting up. Reggie Bowens is a senior. 6'3", 254, and expected to play a major part in South Carolina's blitz packages this evening. He's to his feet, and he's going to jog off to the sideline. Benjamin Boeing, ladies and gentlemen. So an immediate first down on the 11-yard pass play to Franklin puts UAB at the Gamecock 24-yard line. Demario Jeffrey has come in to take his place at the middle linebacking spot. Franklin to the 22. Let's check our Toyota key defenders for South Carolina. Devin Taylor, of course, the other quote-unquote defensive end and a terrific defender in his own right. Shaq Wilson's having a great start this season. Two interceptions in two games. And D.J. Swearinger, born to hit. Coming out of that South Carolina secondary. Perry. Throws this one away, and wisely so. The pressure was coming from the two defensive ends. Penalty flag is down. Well, Devin Taylor and Jadavion Clowney decide to meet at the quarterback. It's five wide. It's an empty package for UAB. The quarterback does not have time to sit back there and throw the football that long. When you only have five guys in the block against those guys, you better hit your back foot and get rid of that football. He just simply held on to it too long. Ken Williamson is our referee tonight. Holding offense number 74. Finley is 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. So from the 24-yard line back to the 34-yard line, it becomes second down and 20. Up for UAB. The ball is at the 34-yard line. It's second and 20. We welcome those of you who joined us to williams Price Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. UAB took the opening kickoff at 53 yards. They have it second and 10, their first drive of the game. 
And a nice carry to eat up most of the penalty yardage and then some. A quick burst of speed for the junior from Marietta, Georgia, Greg Franklin. Jack Wilson to stop. Good job of blocking out there, sealing the edge from tight end Kennard Backman. He set the edge on Devin Taylor. Not easy to do. Taylor goes 6'8", 270 pounds, but Backman able to get in position to free flank Franklin down the field. The crank and the throw complete to the 16-yard line. Jackie Williams, their sure-handed receiver who's caught a pass now in all 25 of his career games at UAB. They do not convert the first down. It's fourth and two, and Ty Long has come into the game to attempt a field goal of 33 yards. Ty Long has hit seven straight field goals, and now a timeout has been taken. UAB. First time out this half. And with that break in the action, we will step aside. 12.45 in the first quarter. No score. No score. 12.45 opening quarter, but UAB is knocking on the door. We come out of the timeout for the field goal. 33 yards by this man. True sophomore Ty Long is out of Roswell, Georgia. He's at a 27-yarder this season. Spotted, kick up, long enough. And this one is good. And UAB uses the big kickoff return to set up a 33-yard field goal. And for the first time since the Florida game last season, South Carolina is trailing in this stadium. Got to be a little frustrating for that UAB offense. They had the big kick return. They were set up in... Great field position. They had a couple penalties on that drive that set them back, but a good job of converting and getting in field goal range and Ty Long knocking that thing in to go up 3 to nothing early on in this football game. A moment ago, we talked about Connor Shaw, who missed last week's contest against uh, for the Gamecocks after playing in the opening game against Vanderbilt. He did not play in last week's game, but as you heard from Elizabeth a moment ago, Connor Shaw will get the start here tonight. Sore shoulder and all. And of course, this the last tune-up before a run of seven consecutive SEC games for the South Carolina Gamecocks. After the win over East Carolina last week, 48 to 10, this ball club now has to look at Missouri, Kentucky, Georgia, at LSU, at Florida in the weeks ahead. Ty Long, who just kicked it off, kicked that field goal, will kick it off now for UAP. And Bruce Ellington is the deep man standing on his own two. One will bounce out of the end zone for the touchback. Carolina will have a first and ten. They'll start on the 25 yard line. South Carolina has yet to return a kick this season. Haven't had the opportunity. So here comes Connor Shaw, the young man from Flowery Branch, Georgia, the son of a, an esteemed high school football coach, our Toyota starting quarterback. We didn't think we would see Connor tonight. He was injured in the Vanderbilt game. He had a bone bruise on that throwing shoulder, the right shoulder, but a gutsy performance in the win against Vanderbilt. He's a tough kid. He likes to run the football. They run a lot of zone read plays with him where he'll tuck it and get up the field. So we'll keep an eye on that shoulder all night long. Take the line of move. Swing it to the outside and a nice pick up. Ellington over the 40. To the 41 yard line. 16 yard gain. So Connor Shaw flexing that shoulder a bit after unloading that first pass. Yeah, he comes out firing in a nice strike to the outside to Bruce Ellington. Gets a good block from his tight end, Rory Anderson, to get this offense moving, keep the chains moving uh, with the first play of the game for South Carolina. Just a gutsy performance, Tim, for Shaw. Two weeks ago in the opener at Vanderbilt really was showed his toughness took a lot of hits throughout that game on that shoulder you could tell he was just in pain but he kept getting up earned a lot of respect from the guys in the locker room for that performance. 
Key and Lattimore, and no game. Let's take a look at our Toyota Key defenders for UAB. Keep an eye on Chris Walton tonight, a solid pass rusher from his defensive end spot. Marvin Burdett, clearly the leader of this defensive unit, his 26th consecutive start tonight. Lamarcus Farmer's a redshirt freshman, and he's going to start on the boundary corner in this game. Second and nine. Off, loads it. Ace Sanders, 50, out of bounds at the 43-yard line. A penalty flag is down. Marvin Burnett runs out of bounds. Marvin Burnett ran him out of bounds as Kenny Williamson checks with his colleagues. If it stands, a 15-yard gain. Offside, defense number 90. A two is the climb. It's over the play. First down. So far, so good for the shoulder health of Connor Shaw. This throw from the opposite hash all the way across the field, getting the football in the playmaker's hands. Ace Sanders is a guy, he's only 5'8", 175 pounds, but he's tremendous in the open field. You get him one-on-one -on -one out in space like that, he's tough to get to the ground. From the UAB 43. Shaw steps up, and this one is intercepted by UAB, and out of bounds, Jake Gannett with the interception, the true freshman from Chelsea, Alabama. Miscommunication, we see A. Sanders right here, he runs the wrong route, Connor Shaw thinks he's going to run the post route. The safety is over the top. Shaw expecting him to run right in or right in here. Connor thinks he's running the corner route. I'm sorry. And Ace Sanders takes it to the post. So it's just a little bit of miscommunication. You have to wonder. Connor Shaw, not a lot of practice time this week, Bob. I wonder how much that played into that decision right there, that little miscommunication between him and Sanders. First and 10 for UAB from the round 16. And good second effort by Greg Franklin. Look at that pile continue to move. Somebody's helmet popped off. Two go off. And one of them is Greg Franklin, so he'll have to sit out a plug. Right. Big interception by Gannis. His first of the year. Same trying to cool off a bit on the UAB sidelines. Still very hot and humid here. Even though the lights are starting to take full effect at the stadium. John Hicks is being helped off the field. He's the starting center. Sophomore from Auburn, Alabama. A six-yard gain for Franklin. Second and four. At the 22. For UAB. Darren Reeves has come in to take Franklin's place in the backfield. Billy Autry moves over from left guard as a backup to snap the football. Reeves could not turn that corner against the Gamecock defenders led by Devontae Holloman. Clowney almost blows this thing up in the backfield. Take a look at Javion Clowney right there. Just overruns it a little bit. Greg, or, I'm sorry, Darren Reeves able to slide out to the outside, but a great job from Holloman that play in that spur position, getting down there, getting physical in the run game. Third and six. Running is Perry. Shy of the first down. Shaq Wilson. Coming over to make the stop after a gain of four yards. And the punt unit coming out to the field now for UAB. Now this is another aspect of the game, Tim, for the Blazers and their punter, Hunter Mullins, to keep it away from Ace Sanders. Right, they're going to use the direction of punt 
in this football game. The last thing they want to do is kick it right down the middle of the field to an elusive player like Sanders. So watch for him to kick this ball to the sideline, trying to get no return on this play. Fair catch. You're looking at Jadavian Clowney putting his sock back on. He just had that right ankle retaped. And we'll get a breather as the South Carolina offense comes out of the field. First down and 10 from the 33 yard line. First down, came back start from the 33 yard line. Connor Shaw remains in at quarterback for the Gamecocks after the interception. The give over the 40 and up to about the 42 yard line. A nice carry for Marcus Latimer. We we'll check in with our keys to the game brought to you by Ford. Well, for South Carolina, it's just what we just saw. Establish the running game with Marcus Lattimore. Last week, he only had 13 attempts for 40 yards. And in the secondary, they have to shore up that pass defense. A lot of yards versus ECU last week. Can't do that tonight against UAB. Marcus Lattimore had only 40 yards last week in the East Carolina game. He is their leading receiver coming out. He's got five balls this season. And he has had just a remarkable career. The only question is, can he stay healthy? Well, they use him a lot. They run him a whole lot. And last week, the reason he only had 13 carries was because the defense was playing so many guys in the box, challenging Dylan Thompson to throw the football field, throw the ball down the field, which he did extremely well. Shaw. And he's taken down. At the 42, Greg Urban came up along with Burdett to make the tackle for UAB. Good coverage downfield. Great coverage down the field, and I think that's something that we're going to see with Connor Shaw tonight. You saw him go down. He slid right there to protect that shoulder. That's not how Connor Shaw normally plays football. When he's healthy and that shoulder isn't banged up, we see him lower the head and try to fight for extra yardage. That time, he just slides down to avoid the contact. Smart play by Connor Shaw. Second down. Big throw, and this one is nearly intercepted by Richards right on the sideline. That ball right in and out of the hands of the senior from Northport, Alabama. It's a long throw. It's from the opposite hash. It's a corner route. That ball's probably in the air about 35, 40 yards, so a lot of time for Cornelius Richards to break on it. And he's looking back in the backfield. He kind of does a little baseball roll out of that as he sees the ball coming out of Shaw's hands, and he breaks on that thing before A. Sanders even gets a chance to. Third down from the 42. Shaw flushed. Penalty flag and sack back at the 28. A terrific play that time for UAB. They got great Holy pressure and collapsed offense, that clock. Number 76. Pocket. Penalty to climb. Fourth down. Great job by Chris Rabb to break through. And once again, good coverage down the field. Plenty of time initially for Shaw to throw the football. Just no one open, so he tries to escape the pocket and try to let something develop down the field. But Chris Rabb isn't having it. A loss of 13 yards. And for South Carolina, Tyler Hull, who transferred here from Guilford College in North Carolina and joined the team. As Camp was underway. Booms one to the 30. This will hit and get a game cop roll inside the 20. Six twenty-five remaining. And the play. skilled offensive tactician. He's worked under great coaches in his career. And one of those assistant coaches that you just had your eye on in the SEC knowing that he was going to get a head coaching opportunity at some point. Pat Hearn makes the grab for UAB, and they come out throwing on first down. They do, and I like the decision to throw the football on first down. Carolina loading, South Carolina loading the box on first down, getting in that extra defender. Good time to throw the football. Jonathan Perry got it out of his hand quickly to Patrick Hearn. Perry over the middle, and that is complete. And into Gamecock territory at the 47-yard line for Kennard Backman. I'll tell you, Jonathan Perry looks confident. 
standing back there in the pocket. He's getting good protection right now, and he's throwing the football quickly. And you can see UAB using tempo. They're trying to tire out the pass rush. Jadavian Clowney, Devin Taylor, they don't want these guys to be fresh coming up the field. That's why you see the hurry up and throwing it down the field. Perry ready to let it loose, and it is going to be incomplete. As Perry was trying to find Patrick Hearn down the field. Perry is a junior from Baltimore, and you see that is the first incompletion of the evening. 6'2", 210 pounds, and you think about, well, will he be able to handle the hostile atmosphere, all the noise at williams Bryce State? We got a taste of it at Florida, and passed with flying colors, and Perry, uh, now a seasoned vet, and looking good in this opening quarter. This is complete, and the tackle made on Jay Davis. Twisted Jay it like a pretzel, but he made the catch. Shaq Wilson got the hit. We should point out Reggie Bowens is back in at middle linebacker for South Carolina. He came out, had the win knocked out of it earlier in the first quarter. Three nothing UAB. And a big third and four right here for the Blazers. to the sideline to Garrett McGee to get the play call and South Carolina will audible along with that on defense as well. Terry throws complete to the 39 yard line. Is it enough? They spotted at the 38 and it appears that UAB's got the first down. And lucky to get that football in there because South Carolina, like I said, they UAB audibled on defense as well. They switched to a cover two. I don't think Jonathan Perry thought that Victor Hampton would be sitting out there in the flat or he wouldn't have tried that throw. Good job of just squeezing that thing. A good low throw so he didn't take the big hit. A gain of five and a first down. Incomplete at the goal line. Intended for Jackie Williams. So UAB not bashful about going to work on a still... Right. Untested yeah. South Carolina secondary. Very untested secondary. And just like Elizabeth said on the sideline, Garrick McGee wants to be more aggressive with his play calling. And we've seen that in these first couple drives. They're throwing the football down the field. That's a couple times we've seen them try to get the ball to Jackie Williams in that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Jimmy Legree. Greg Franklin is back in as the lone setback behind quarterback Jonathan Perry. Franklin. Cloudy says not this time. <laughs> Yet another tackle for loss, his third of the season. He's just disruptive, not only in the pass rush, but in the running game. And I think that's where he's improved the most. You see the move to the inside. He slips past Chris Hubbard, the left tackle for UAB, and he just has such a better understanding of using his technique, not just relying on, on pure athletic ability this season. 6'6", 256, and nasty. Perry. Sideline and a catch is made and a terrific grab made on the sideline for UAB by Jackie Williams and that is going to result in a UAB first down. Continue to be impressed by Jonathan Perry early on in this football game. He doesn't panic in the pocket. He steps up like you're supposed to, buys himself a little bit of time, and Jackie Williams is able to work free on the sideline. It's hard to cover guys that long down the field. Jimmy Legree had to cover Jackie Williams for five or six seconds the way that Jonathan Perry was able to get out of the pocket and extend the play. 24-yard pickup. Octavius Jackson is the new running back for Georgia transfer. And a whistle blows the play dead. Play of game, offense, number 14. Five-yard penalty remains first down. One thing to keep in mind, this is a very untested offensive line for UAB. Their starting center, John Hicks, went out with injury, so they're working with a backup in Billy Autry, and I'm wondering about the communication 
as they try to change these plays and cadences. Well, that's a, that's a great point, Bobby. You always wonder because the center is the key man for that communication, getting everyone going the right way in the blocking schemes. And with a new guy in there, you have to wonder how that communication is going right now. Jackson, shy of the 25. Now, Tavia sat out the 2010 year as a transfer from Georgia, now a senior from Franklin, Georgia. 11 carries in the Troy game, the most of these carried in the game at UAB, 26 yards. He comes off, Franklin comes back in. And a repair on the shoulder pad there, neatly now under his jersey as we go to second and 12. Incomplete for Backman. That's Jenny Barkadar to Backman is... Kelsey Quarles bringing the heat up front. Kelsey Quarles, 6'4", put on a little conditioning weight. He's up to 286 now, had a sack this season. His dad played here in the mid-80s. This is the 11th play of the drive. Teams have been converting early in the year in South Carolina. South Carolina showing a blitz initially here. Let's see if they stay with this blitz or if they're going to audible out along with UAB. But looks like Garrick McGee wants a timeout. A little. Three nothing UAB, and if you're wondering why Garrick McGee was so upset, Tim, there's a very good reason. Well, there's no question about it. South Carolina was in the perfect look for UAB. They were going to blitz. They had seven guys going to blitz on that play, and they had the perfect play call. Garrick McGee felt like, and he wanted that football snap. Had an opportunity right there for a big play versus the blitz, and, get, and didn't get a call. Oh, a fumble taken out of the air by South Carolina. The Gamecocks are going to score. D.J. Swearinger, look what I found. Touchdown. A 65-yard return for the touchdown. And South Carolina getting set to add the PAT. And the kick is good. What a change of events. UAB thought they had the perfect play call, didn't get it snapped after the timeout. Perry just had the ball fall out of his hand. It simply just falls out of his hands. You're right, Bob, and DJ Swearinger on a safety blitz that time. Right place, right time. He, he's coming in to make the sack on the quarterback, and all of a sudden he looks up, hey, the football is in my hands, and he's running the other way with it. But Jonathan Perry, that's, that's something that I don't know how big his hands are, but really if you, if you have big hands, that's really never going to be an issue with you as a quarterback. So maybe he has small hands. I'm not sure. Maybe, you know, the humidity in the air tonight. Uh, the ball just simply slipped out of his hands. No excuses for that if you're Jonathan Perry. And with that, the Gamecocks take a 7-3 lead, 2-17 to play in the first quarter. Now quickly, the game could turn around. And that's why Coach McGee was so frustrated with that play call and not being able to get that football snap. When you think you have the perfect call against the perfect defense, it's frustrating to not be able to get that football snap because you never know what's going to happen on the next play, as we just saw. J.J. Nelson and Jackie Williams back deep for UAB. Ready to put it away for South Carolina. Here's this one. And Nelson takes a knee. 
Just down, go down to the field and Elizabeth. Guys, thank you. South Carolina needs something to ignite their sideline. Well, that's exactly what that big play by Swearinger. Coach Spurrier said that he's worked on his leadership. What better way with that big play, guys? I'm standing right here. The defense will not sit down. They seem focused. This sideline a little bit more happy, guys. Yes, that's an attitude changer right there. No question about it, and especially the timing on it was perfect for this South Carolina defense because Jonathan Perry and these wide receivers, Patrick Hearn, Jackie Williams, they were working open down the field on that drive. Perry was throwing strikes in there. They sure looked like they were going to get some points on that possession, and the big play for D.J. Swearinger stopped that. Perry rolling, pressure, hit as he throws, and it's going to be caught at the, or in, let's see. They're going to spot it down for a catch at the 43-yard line. Patrick Hearn, how did he hang on to that thing? It's a and throwback look at, play. Yeah, look it's at just this a pressure by Taylor. Yeah, Taylor right up the middle. It's a throwback play. Jonathan Perry trying to sell the sprint out to the right and get the crossing rack, crossing route back to the backside. He never saw the underneath coverage. Lucky to get away with that throw. Penalty fly as Reeves takes the ball to midfield, a face mask. What was so great about Hearn? Did you see the concentration? and carry that catch all the way to the ground. That no was question. Terrific. Very impressive. Holding offense, number 45. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Sam Accorsio, the guilty party. Keep your eye on 16 for UAB. Patrick Hearn, the senior. And like you said, Bob, concentration is what it's all about. Two guys coming at him. He feels those. He feels the pressure of the two defenders from South Carolina. Just ignores it. F focuses on the football. Goes up high. Makes the catch. Great catch by Patrick Kern. Third penalty against the Blazers. Quarterback keeps. And Perry knocked down at the 35. Perry on the carry for UAB. As we mentioned, Perry's a big kid. He's 6'2", 210. Carried the ball 13 times against Troy for 46 yards. So he can carry it when needed. One ten remaining in a most exciting first quarter. Perry's got a man open and it's complete. And down the sideline, finally wrestled out of bounds. J.J. Nelson made the grab, and he had plenty of room to operate. He did, and it must have been a miscommunication in the secondary for South Carolina. Second down and 18 play, and you're going to allow a guy to get wide open down the sideline. J.J. Nelson just finding the hole in this zone defense. The corner, it's a cover two zone, and Swearinger simply does not get over the top of that thing. That is Swearinger's responsibility in cover two. He has to be over the top of that and not allow that throw to happen. Elude the tackle on turning that corner. Jamario Jeffrey, Jeffrey tripped him up. Jamario Jeffrey on the tackle for the Gamecocks. To the 36-yard line, it will be a loss of a couple of yards. 20 seconds. All that remain here in the first quarter. And the Blazers are going to let the. Well, no, they're going to. They are going to try to snap it here. Eight. Seven, six seconds left in the period. Perry has time. He looks. He goes deep, and it's just off the fingertips of Jackie Williams. And that will bring the first quarter to an end. An exciting first period, to say the least. The number eight team in the country fell behind 3 nothing. And then the big fumble recovery for the score, Gamecock 7. Field where they're starting to struggle. They're moving the football well. They get down here across midfield, and they hurt themselves with penalties and turnovers. They have to be more efficient in this area of the field, and that's up to Jonathan Perry to get this thing going for UAB. So we begin period two. Jonathan Perry and the Blazers faced with a third and long situation. From the South Carolina 36-yard line. 
And from the South Carolina perspective, Tim, that was not a crisp first quarter at all. No, it wasn't, and they didn't look uh, particularly good on offense. They had some a couple passes that sh uh, could have been picked off. One pass that was picked off. They did not run the football well at all. Marcus yes. Lattimore was stuffed at the line of scrimmage on several occasions. So a frustrating first quarter for South Carolina. UAB two of five on third down. Right. And thrown past the reach of Greg Franklin. We just threw it too hard. And you saw Greg Franklin coming back to the huddle telling Perry to take a little bit off that. You know, it's only a little swing route to the outside. You would like to see him throw that football with a little bit more touch. And he just threw a laser at him from about five yards away. And Franklin couldn't even get a hand on it. Lasers will go for it on fourth and 11. away from Clowney and hit as he throws and the ball sails out of bounds great pressure for South Carolina Aldrich Fordham 57 after Clowney could not get him at the corner look at this pressure South Carolina shows blitz early on then all of a sudden you see all these linebackers drop into zone coverage I think Jonathan Perry thought he was going to get a big blitz right there in man-to-man -man coverage but South Carolina confuses him by dropping back into his zone, forcing him to hold that football and just trying to scramble out to make something happen so the Gamecocks take over offensively Connor Shaw remains at quarterback for the Gamecocks Carry to Marcus Lattimore. Falls to the 40-yard line. We were watching tape of Marcus Our yesterday, Tim. And even though he only had a handful of yards by his standards last week, you could just sense that he has such a knack for making something happen out of nothing. He really does. He does not need much of a crease, as we saw on the film. Just a small, tiny little crease is all he needs. He does not waste time dancing in the backfield. He will lower his head, get four or five yards, as you saw there on the first down play. Quick throw, and this one incomplete for A. Sanders. Passing to A. Sanders. Connor looks a little off to me, Bob, to be honest. You know, early in the first quarter here, he, like we've said, the last two weeks, really, he has missed a lot of practice time. So you have to wonder, you know, if he was going to come out in this game a little bit rusty. And I think so far the answer to that is yes. We saw him and A. Sanders be a little bit uh, miscommunication on a, on a couple of throws. And he's only started this football game two out of five passing for 31 yards and the interception that I mentioned. Three-step drop and a quick throw to Sanders. Breaks a tackle. Out of bounds at the 35. Twenty-five yard gain. First down game cut. From the UAB 35, Shaw will run it. Slides to the 31-yard line, trying to keep that shoulder away from contact. Yeah, certainly that's going to be his game plan tonight. He's trying to avoid the big hit, which is very smart on Connor's uh, on Connor's decision to get down a couple times in this game and, and avoid the big shot. Steve Spurrier on the threshold of career win number 200 as a collegiate head coach. Closer than most anticipated tonight, at least through the first half. <laughs> to the 28 yard line for Lattimore. Marvin Burnett for UAB on the tackle. Marcus Lattimore has tied the school record for overall touchdowns, rushing and receiving with 33. One more, and the record will be his. And keep in mind, breaks that record with all the time lost due to... Oh, 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 oh. It's hard to 
stop his momentum. He's something. Grinds out the first down at the 21-yard line. And that's the leg drive that I was talking about. When you come off that ACL surgery, does he still have that power, that leg drive to move the pile? Look, he's contacted right at the line of scrimmage that time by number 18. Trey Grissett, he just continues to pump the legs and drive right through it for a first down. This time he is denied by Shaq Jones, true freshman linebacker. This is a very young UAB defense. Coach McGee was telling us that last week his overall ball club, 22 players either played their first collegiate game or played their first game at a new position, and two more were going to be in that role tonight. It's a lot to ask of your ball club coming out of the road in the SEC. They played a great hand. Shaw with a quick throw to Lowry. How did he get out of that first hit? My goodness, it staggered him. Like the uh, <laughs> a fighter going for a first round knockout, it kind of staggered him a bit, but he regained his balance and turned it into positive yardage. Well, probably the best running back in the country at getting yards after contact. You see he's exposed a little bit with the high throw out in the flat. 42, Shaq Jones comes up. Should be a sure tackle. He slips right underneath the tackle. He's just so crafty and finds so many ways to break tackles and continue to fall forward and get positive yardage. Kenny Miles is now the running back. Sanders. Sanders. Touchdown. Penalty fly. Offside. Defense. Number 90. Penalty is the climb. Touchdown. This is what A. Sanders can do. Just a quick little throw out here to the flat. Number 28, Cornelius Richards had a shot at A. Sanders initially, but he's at airline. Adam Yates wearing number eight tonight. Lines up the PAT. 11-15 to play, second quarter from Columbia. Number eight, South Carolina takes a 14-3 advantage. A. Sanders with his second touchdown of the season. And the Gamecocks go in front by 11. A touchdown pass to A. Sanders from Connor Shaw. And now the Gamecocks get ready to kick off. Adam Yates, the senior. Looking to drill one. Back deep, J.J. Nelson and Jackie Williams. Williams at the top of your screen. As we check in once again with Elizabeth Morrow. Bob, thank you very much. During the spring and summer, Javavian Clowney put in a lot of work in the weight room, trying to change his body a little bit. He added 10 pounds to get to 265. Monday through Thursday, put in two extra hours. But what he also worked on was his technique. Defensive coordinator Ward told us he, until becoming a Gamecock, he had gone off his own natural talents and abilities, but he really has studied the playbook. Guys, I'll tell you what, though, I stood next to him, and I am by no means petite. The man is absolutely incredible. <laughs> Clowny, one big ball of muscle, huge. And there was some injury concerns for Clowney earlier in the week, and as he suffered some bruised ribs against East Carolina, did not practice Monday or Tuesday, but he is indeed a physical specimen. And has such a bright future in this game. Disaster averted, but an incomplete pass out to the 29-yard line. Second and 10 for Garrick McGee and the Blazers. As the offensive coordinator at Arkansas, Garrick enjoyed three wins for the Razorbacks over South Carolina, three consecutive over South Carolina by a composite score of 118 to 64. Coach Spurrier was saying during the week, hey, they've got us figured out. He brought three Razorback assistants with him to Birmingham. Perry tripped as he gets over the 25 to the 27. Bowen's the tackle. Don't you think?
think about Garrett McKee and this Tulsa native, former quarterback at Oklahoma, worked under Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern, John Robinson at UAB, of course, Bobby Petrino at Arkansas. He's ready to make his mark. No question about it. And I know just calling games the last couple of years, you and I, Bob, getting a chance to know Garrett when he was at Arkansas, we both felt that he was going to be a head coach somewhere, somewhere really soon. And he's doing a nice job here at UB, UAB, taking over a very young football team. It's going to take him a few years to get the type of players that he needs, but uh, it's certainly a bright future for Garrett McGee. Tipped and complete. Pat Hearn had that one bounce off his hands. Jimmy Legree defending. Take a look here. Oh, it was tipped. It was tipped. Devontae Holloman got a hand on that thing, but a good try right there by Jonathan Perry. He had to work the football down the field right there. He's in a third and long situation. You have to try to get it up the seam. He was trying to force that ball into Hearn, but uh, Holloman right on the spot. Hunter Mullins is the UAB punter. A Sanders back on his own 30. Sanders can't make a play on the ball as it goes out of bounds. It will be marked out at the 38-yard line. So Mullins does his job, keep it away from Sanders. 14-3, South Carolina. Okay, Andre, 14-3 here in Columbia. South Carolina and Georgia meet in October with the new SEC schedule. That will be Saturday, October 6th here at williams Bryce. Game that may very well decide the SEC East. From the 33, first and 10 for the Gamecock. Shaw has gone the distance at quarterback for South Carolina. They bring pressure from the outside. Pass up to the 36-yard line, Rory Anderson. Last drive, it was A. Sanders making plays. And finally, Connor Shaw and A. Sanders are able to get on the same page. I thought Connor Shaw was a little rusty on the first couple drives, but in, the, in on that particular drive, he found A. Sanders a couple times out in space, and that's what it's all about. If you get him the football out in space, he is so tough to get to the ground. Connor Shaw is here. Keep it on the ground. Shaw hangs it onto it to the 39-yard line. Brought down by strong safety Calvin Jones. And, and a good point, Tim, that you make is Shaw in the second quarter seems to be settling into the into the ball game. I think so. I think anytime you have a an injury, particularly to your throwing shoulder, you're always going to wonder how that's going to feel. You're kind of nervous to take that first hit. You're not you're not sure if it's going to hold with withhold the uh, punishment of getting hit out here. So I think the first quarter he was a little antsy, a little nervous, but uh, I think he settled into the game nicely. He stretches out over the 40 to the 41. Shaw, the keeper for Carolina. Everyone here at the stadium holding their breath to see if that yeah. shoulder gets hit. Gain of one. That sets up fourth and three, and Coach Spurrier will have to punt it to Take the Blazers. For the Tyler Hall. Launched his first punt tonight. Jackie Williams, the deep man. Short kick, and this is going to hit in front of the UAB bench and out of bounds. Let's see where they decide to mark it. They're still walking it off. And they say it's out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So good field position for the Blazers when we come back. Conference wins as a head man of this league, Florida, South Carolina. Our question, who has the most? Think that went over. We'll have it a little later tonight. Got the Blazers on first down. Aaron Reeves puts it out to about the 42 yard line. Ball carrier was Greg Franklin, and Chaz Sutton made the tackle for the Gamecocks. Not a lot of success for UAB trying to run the football on first down. That's the third time on first down they've tried to run it for only a gain of 
seven yards total. But when they throw the football, they've thrown it four times on first down for 40 yards. So first down is the option there, throwing the football when they need it. Down the middle. And a diving catch incomplete. No, no catch. Bryson Williams. Looked like he had it for an instant. Let's take a look at the tail end of the play. Perry forced that football a little bit into double coverage. Bryson Williams over the top playing center field. He actually had a wheel route on the sideline to his fullback, Sam Accorsio. No one covered him. You see Sam running back here in the background with no one on him. Perry just kind of locked on to one receiver and forced it down the field. Bryson Williams, the sophomore. Had an off week at Vandy, but rebounded well last week in the East Carolina game. UAB two for seven on third down. Quick throw and complete. Nice grab and additional yardage after the first hit for a UAB first down as Nick Adams made the play. We're turning to his native South Carolina tonight. This redshirt senior from Walterboro, South Carolina makes the grab at williams Bryce Stadium. Excellent job of recognition that time by Jonathan Perry. He saw the blitz from South Carolina. They brought the safety. They brought two linebackers on that play. He found the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside to Nick Adams for a big first down conversion. Reeves. Running room to the outside. And another blazer first down. This is a gain of 13. Finally some success running the football on first down. Good job up front by the left side of that offensive line. Chris Hubbard, the left tackle, their best offensive lineman, still in the edge, getting, giving Darren Reeves the opportunity to turn it up the field. From the 32, nine. First half, first downs for the Blazers. Coming up to lower the boom was Quinn Smith. Loss of eight. Quinn Smith in the backfield. You see him coming right here on the blitz. Great coverage down there. It's just an A-gap blitz. He's able to slide out of the initial block, and no one opened down the field. You saw Jonathan Perry wanted to work the football to J.J. Nelson on the post corner route, but it was double covered. Had to just tuck that football and take the sack. Glenn Smith, the backup to Shaq Wilson. 14-3. And the Blazers are forced to take another timeout. And that is their third and final timeout in the first half. We'll take the break with them. 6.04 remaining in the first half. And coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report with Andre Aldridge, scores and highlights from all of today's action in the SEC. And a wild one on the plane. Auburn pulling it out in overtime against Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Monroe almost back-to-back -back weeks was able to pull upsets in the SEC. That would have been something else. I'll tell you, that's a tough football team to be able to go on the road and play in the SEC and almost pull out a victory at Auburn today. Very plenty of time. And the grab is made. Spins out of the tackle to the 31-yard line. That's Pat Hearn. Patrick Hearn, Monroe had won that game today. We were going to put him at 2-0 in the SEC West. <laughs> I know, right? The toughest division in all of football. They're going to just come in and act like it's no big deal to go 2-0 on the road. But uh, a nice job from Jonathan Perry right there. Long, second long situation. He just takes it underneath throw and is able to get it back into a manageable situation of a third and nine here. Big, big play for UAB offense. Play clock's down to three. Tough running room for Darren Reeves. 
Craig Smith on the tackle for the game. Not nearly enough at the 29. They needed to get to the 21 for the first down. A pickup of two yards. Quinn Smith, another tackle. Very impressive work in a reserve role. Ty Long in to Ty attempt Long his second field goal, goal tonight. Gravy. He started the scoring tonight with a 33-yarder. This will be a 46-yard attempt. And this one gets through the uprights. It had just enough to get over. And a 46-yard field goal Carolina cuts the South Carolina UAB lead six. to 14 to 6. Well, we talked about Louisiana Monroe with a very daunting trip through the SEC. How about the schedule for the Blazers? They have to go to number eight South Carolina and next week to the Horseshoe. And then they begin conference USA play with Tulsa. But there's no doubt we've talked to coaches from Conference USA in the past couple of weeks and they all geared toward their league season and use these games has very valuable training lessons to get ready for league, their league play. No question, and I think the main thing when you're playing these type of games you, from Conference USA coming to play an SEC team, the main thing is to get out of these games healthy, as you said, Bob. They're trying to get to their schedule, to, the, to their conference schedule, so they just want to get these guys healthy. It's a great experience to play against one of the top teams in the country in South Carolina, and, and they've played well so far in this first half. They've had a lot of mistakes. They've had some turnovers. They've had a lot of penalties, especially when they get to the South Carolina side of the field and score in position and really hurt themselves. They've had an opportunity to put a lot more points on the board. But, uh, you know, all, all in all, pretty, pretty good performance so far for UAB. UAB has had the ball six times tonight and four of the drives. They have penetrated South Carolina territory and they now have six points to show for it. They have dominated time of possession. The point guard of the basketball team, Bruce Ellington, is the deep man for the Gamecocks. And over Ellington, and out of the end zone. So a great kick by Ty Long. And it will be first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Gamecocks with Connor Shaw. A surprise to many, a big cheer went up when he was introduced as the starter in the pregame ceremonies. Six of nine for 79 yards, and it looks like he's gotten through this first half to date with no problems on the shoulder. Hasn't taken any hits. Floats it over the middle. This is going to be complete to Ellington. Cutting across the field. Like He's out over the 30 to the 33 before Farmer redshirt Farmer freshman Farmer. LaMarcus Farmer brought him down. Nice job of recognition, recognizing the coverage and getting the football out quickly to Bruce Ellington. It's just a little starter play where you're trying to get a little hurry up offense going right here. All you want to do on first down is get a completion, get it into your guys' hands and see if they can make a play for you. The give is to Kenny Miles. to the 33. No gain on the play. Jamie Anya Frack, the sophomore from Sarasota, Florida. Ready to that last UAB stop. Third. And a long two. Miles. Could not get the first down. The Blazers. Hold on the running play. Shaq Jones, a true freshman, up to make the play. Shaq Jones makes the tackle, but number four, Jake Gannis, came up from his safety position to cause that play. He came right in the alley where they were trying to run the football. Rory Anderson, the tight end, tried to pick him up, but he took out two blockers for South Carolina, free and Shaq Jones to run untouched to make that tackle. Tyler Hall shanked his last punt, 18 yards. Extra deep himself. Ricky Williams set to return. Under three minutes to play, first hand. High kick. Williams comes over, has to dive to make the fair catch. 
at the 30 uh, 26 yard line a 42 yard punt for the sophomore from Mount Airy North Carolina. So the Blazers Tim get another shot at it here with 243 to go before halftime. And they just have to find a way to make some plays once they cross Anybody midfield. Had they've had no problem controlling the clock as we saw with the time of possession a little earlier. But they're they're running the football well. They're throwing the football well in that area. But when they get across midfield, for some reason, they're taking unnecessary sacks. Perry has to throw the football away down there when it's not there. Things are starting to happen a little quicker down in that end of the field. Just has to make better decisions. And a sack back at the 18-yard line. More terrific pressure up front. Kelsey Quarles is just as his game goes on, he is just becoming more and more of a factor. He is, and it's just a bull rush. He pushes the offensive lineman. That's number 79. That's Cody Payne. He just drives him right back into the quarterback. Loss of seven. And the Gamecocks have burned their first time out of the half. And stops the clock with 2.31 to play. As we check in with, with Elizabeth down on the field. Guys, thank you so much. South Carolina invested, invested $30 million into an area right outside of the stadium for a tailgating zone. I went by there today, walked through it. It's absolutely beautiful. Tons of stuff going on. You can grill out, play games. Yes, I whiffed once or twice, maybe three times. Throw the, I threw the ball around a little bit. A kid's zone, there's live music. A really cool place for fans to enjoy a few hours of tailgating before heading into the game. Guys, they also added a 200-yard grand walkway for the players to walk into the stadium. They hadn't done that before. And when I talked to Coach Spurrier, I don't think he really liked that walk. But he said, I didn't dress in a suit and tie. I got to go casual today. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling out Perry and off the fingertips. Incomplete intended for Franklin. Pass intended for Greg Franklin. Is it complete flag, flag on the play. Decline. Third down. Third and 17. Gamecocks have a couple of timeouts in their back pocket. Again, starting center, John Hicks lost to injury for UAB. Billy Autry snapping the football. And nowhere to go for Greg Franklin. Once again, the guys up front, defensive end Devin Taylor, closing it down quickly. Devin Taylor so strong against the run, especially when you don't block him. How about blocking the guy who's six foot eight, 270 pounds? No one laid a hand on him. He's just able to run free in the backfield and stop that play before it ever got started. Another South Carolina timeout to save as much time as possible here after the uh, ensuing UAB punt, 2-19. Remaining right now on a fourth down punt coming. Let's take a look at our GMC video vault. And when you come to Columbia and you talk a Gamecock football, you're talking about one of the, the very best. Former Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers. Still the all-time leading rusher in South Carolina history, and I think a mark that will stand for quite some time, over 5,000 yards, and a look at his Heisman Trophy that's prominently displayed here. Two Heisman Trophy winners from the city of Atlanta. George Rogers was the first, Cam Newton was the second. Nice. A bad punt here, Shank. And where will they mark it? <laughs> Gamecock coaches want it at the 30-yard <laughs> line. Let's see what the refs say. They're going to mark it out at the 37. Well, that's the last thing you need if you're UAB. There are only two minutes and 13 seconds left in this first half, and you want to try to flip the field position. You need a big punt to get them out of there, but they set South Carolina up in a great position to get points before the half here. 19-yard punt. Coach Spurrier checks the, uh, the chart for what he wants to do here from the UAB 37.
Shaw. Near side. No catch. Incomplete. Intended for D.L. Moore. As intended for D.L. Moore is. D.L. Moore working on the outside one-on-one -on -one against number three, LaMarcus Farmer. It looked like a good throw by Connor Shaw right there. It was right on time, right to the outside. D.L. Moore has to catch that football. That ball is right on the money, right between the eight and the two. LaMarcus Farmer, number three, the man defending. Shaw looks to throw again, and another incomplete pass. Again, right on the chest. All right, that's D.L. Moore again. Looked like that time they tried to work the curl route, just tried to drop back and get him on that little underneath route, and Moore's not able to come up with football once again. So third and ten. Shaw over the middle this time and incomplete. So South Carolina, they look for Cunningham. Just trying everything to preserve time, and then they come back with three straight incomplete passes. Right. Looks like they're going to stay on the field and go for this, but uh, that time Connor Shaw just forced that football. It was triple coverage down the middle of the field against Justice Cunningham, and he just kind of locked in on him, on him and kind of predetermined the throw before he allowed the defense to develop. So on fourth and ten from the Blazer 37. Connor Shaw. Gets everybody set. Here we go. Looking to throw. This one is going to be incomplete. And a penalty flag. Farmer, they're picking on him. Interference defense number three. A penalty of 15 yards in the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Well, a little pressure in the face of Connor Shaw, not able to step up into the pocket that time. They had a blitz coming on around the outside. But here's the play down the field. They're trying to work the ball to Bruce Ellington against Lamarcus Farmer. The ball is underthrown a little bit. I don't see where the penalty is unless it was called earlier, maybe holding before we saw that, but I, I think that's nothing at the end of the play. No, I, I think that's a good play by Farmer. He's playing that football. He has every right to that ball as well. He got his head around and tried to make a play on the football. I didn't see a pass interference on that. So South Carolina gets to throw it again, and this is going to be caught and down at the three-yard line, and Shaw down is too. down. Bruce Ellington was the man who made the grab, but this is the great fear that Shaw was going to get re-injured on that shoulder. We don't know that it's a shoulder injury, of course, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. Let's take a look at Shaw getting hit. Looks like there's a free guy coming up, and that's a big shot right there. Linebacker Greg Urban in a great throw by Connor Shaw, knowing he's going to take that big hit. He puts the football right on the money on the outside to Bruce Ellington, but the concern is the hit. Is it in the shoulder? It looks like it's right on that throwing shoulder, that bruised bone on the throwing shoulder and you can see just a lot of pain as Shaw tucks that right arm underneath him and hopefully he's okay but that's that's the concern you have coming in I mean Shaw's a tough kid he's a tough quarterback he's going to stand in that pocket and he's not afraid of contact and and Greg Irvin comes free on the blitz and just delivers a blow right to that shoulder a minute 44 to go before halftime a 19 yard pickup but 80,000 are holding their breath to see the condition of Shaw. Dylan Thompson, who played so magnificently last week against East Carolina, will be coming in. Connor being helped to his feet. And much like the Vanderbilt game, holding that right arm. Well, I hate to see that with Connor Shaw. Just really like watching him play football. He's such a gritty, tough competitor, and he's a winner. He's won nine out of his ten starts since he's been the starting quarterback here at South Carolina. Hopefully, he'll he's okay and he's able to get back out on the field. But that was a big shot on that uh, on that uh, sore shoulder. So Dylan Thompson, the sophomore from Boylan Springs, South Carolina, who threw for 330 last week. 
comes in. And a handoff for a touchdown. Marcus Lattimore. And with that, he becomes the all-time South Carolina record holder for overall touchdown. So this is more where, where Marcus Lattimore is at his best. Down here, goal line running is just so hard to stop him from getting in the end zone. And great blocking up front by center T.J. Johnson, the right guard Ronald Patrick, opening up a hole for Marcus to get through, and he wastes no time getting there. Adam Yates pumps it through. 137. Time remaining in the second quarter. And Connor Shaw hurting on that Gamecock bench. Marcus Lattimore adds another tremendous accolade to his impressive South Carolina career. Already 34 career touchdowns for that young man. And as you mentioned, he missed half of the season last year with that knee injury. Just so productive, so prolific already as a young football player. Just such a tremendous future ahead for that young man. And uh, glad to see him back and healthy from that knee injury and, and running at full speed again. 21-6 Gamecocks with 137. The time remaining here in the second quarter. So the Gamecocks will give it back to UAB. As Adam Yates prepares to kick it away, a five-play, 37-yard drive for the Gamecocks. It took a pass interference call on a fourth and ten to give the Gamecocks an opportunity. In the very next play, Shaw got hurt. Touchback. This is the record breaker for Marcus Lattimore. Our John Deere Gator RSX 850i power play of the game. And just good blocking, like I said. Marcus Lattimore so tough to bring down in these short yardage and goal line situations. One of the better short yardage backs, and that's there's an art, there's a skill to running in those type of situations. A lot of guys kind of dance around. They run with their pad level too high. Marcus is outstanding at getting that pad level lower than the defenders and always falling forward. That's why he scores so many touchdowns. Reeves, the ball carrier to the 25. No game. The Davian Clowney came up to make the stop. Big number seven getting off the, the pile. What a player. Freshman of the year last year, the National High School Player of the Year two years ago coming out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. And that's one thing Steve Spurrier has been able to do in these recent years is corral the best talent in this state. Lattimore is a South Carolinian. Here is Cox now, and it's made all the difference. Reeves. Out of bounds. Well, you're exactly right about that, Bob. You mentioned it. The last four Mr. Football players out of the state of South Carolina has signed here, and that's so important. You have Shaq Rowland, Jadavion Clowney, Marcus Lattimore, Stephon Gilmore. You keep the top talent at home, and all of a sudden, the guys start following behind these guys. They say, well, if those guys are going to go there, they have an opportunity to play at other schools. Well, there must be something going on in South Carolina and with Steve Spurrier, and it just continues to build on your recruiting success. It's so big to get those guys in your program. And they're winning like they've never won before here in Columbia. An 11-win season a year ago, best in school history. Quick slant to Williams. And we'll see where they mark it. Jackie Williams on the reach. It's a first down. 46 Jackie seconds Williams left in the second quarter. The nose of the ball over the 35. UAB first down. It is a first down. We see UAB has no sense of urgency right now in this situation. Only 45 seconds left to go in the half. First They're down 21 to 6. The last thing they want to do is have another turnover on this end of the field and give South Carolina a touchdown going in or points going in at halftime. So we're going to see them just run this clock out and be extremely conservative.
Perry looks to throw, now steps up. For Texas, he crosses the 40 to the 42. That will be the final play of this first half. UAB has burned all their timeouts. Well, they're going to hurry to the line here. Let's see if they can snap it in the last six seconds. Two seconds, one, and they do not get it off. So it is halftime in Columbia. Eric McGee talking to his wide receiver Jackie Williams as he exits the field. The Gamecocks head to their locker room. And a little tougher than expected first half of the eighth-ranked team in the country. Trailing initially 3-0 in the ball game. Took the lead on a fumble recovery as we go down to check in with Elizabeth. Bob, thank you, Coach. Do you have an injury update for me on Connor Shaw? Yeah, he got hit right in that little sore muscle place. So he's probably finished for the night. He just sort of threw. And that was his best throw of the night when he got hit. So uh, hopefully he'll be all right next week. But we're gonna, we'll rest him, rest the game, and Dylan will come in. Marcus Lattimore breaks the touchdown record tonight. What makes him so special? Well, he's just a good running back. He, he, he can break tackles. And hopefully we can give him a little more room to run this second half. All right, thanks, Coach. Right. Pride of who we are as a football program. That's why they play with the passion and the pride that they have. I'm really proud of them. Thanks, Coach. Ace Sanders with the catch. Dylan Thompson with the pass. Chris Walton with the tackle as we begin this third period of play. Ace Sanders had a very productive first half. And that grab actually lost a yard. So second and 11. The sophomore Dylan Thompson on it. Boiling Springs, South Carolina, 6'3", 212. Back to pass. Pressure. Escapes. Throws. Picked off. UAB's got it. And Jake Gannis has his second interception. Well, it all starts with pressure on Dylan Thompson. He's forced out of the pocket. He just throws this football up for grabs, not able to get anything on the throw. And Jake Gannis just playing center field, just falls under that football. Nice, easy interception for Gannis. The question of a penalty here thrown back at the 16-yard line. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, 15-yard penalty. From the previous spot, automatic first down. So what a break for South Carolina. Big break for South Carolina. The last thing they wanted to do was come out in the first play of the second half and throw an interception and set UAB up in great field position, but they give it away by a late hit, roughing the quarterback. Yeah, absolutely, 43 comes in there late. That's Marvin Burdett. Marvin Burdett coming in late to put the shot on Dylan Thompson. First and 10 from the 40. Thompson. And that's through the hands of Demir Bird. For Demir Bird is incomplete. Second and 5'9 speedster. Bird out of New Jersey. There must be something in the water up there, Tim. He grew up 30 minutes from Carl Lewis's hometown. <laughs> so oh. There's a little speed going on up there. <laughs> they huh? all get run. <laughs> Thompson over the middle this time. And that's going to be incomplete. Sanders, the intended receiver. Intended for Ace Sanders is incomplete. It'll be 30, uh, 30 10. That certainly didn't look like the Dylan Thompson we saw last week playing against East Carolina. He was on fire last week. He threw for 330 yards. That time, Ace Sanders wide open in the middle of the field, and the ball just sails on Dylan Thompson. Thompson was outstanding. 21 of 37 last week, 330 yards, and hit 11 different receivers. His first career start. Thompson goes underneath to Ellington. Over the 50, first down game comes at the UAB 49. Gannis the tackle. Well blocked, little screen. It's just a little tunnel screen underneath right here to Bruce Ellington. The offensive lineman getting down the field, throwing blocks. Ronald Patrick getting down the field. A.J. Can getting down the field. Good job of blocking downfield by that offensive line, showing their athleticism. Huh. 
Thompson. Another long throw. Too much for Ray Sanders. And this is what we saw last week against East Carolina. These long passes, opposite hash down the sideline, long throws from Dillon. Dillon has the ability to do that, and uh, this offense will look a lot different when Dillon's in the game. He likes to throw the deep ball. He likes to get it down the field, and Steve Spurrier likes for him to do that. He feels like he said last week that uh, it was the first time in a long time since he's been here at South Carolina that he's called pass plays down the field, and they were able to hit those. So Dillon brings that added dimension to this offense. Thompson, and that is going to be incomplete, nearly intercepted. Gannis, who's just been a ball magnet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan is uh, the ball selling on Dylan right now. I'm not sure if it's nerves or the ball's just kind of slipping out of his hand, but that's a couple throws that we've seen just sail out of his hand. They're not even close either, and Gannis should have came up with another one there. Yeah, you talked about the passing yards last week, 397, the most right. for Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. First down, Third down. Marcus Lattimore, the setback. Into block. Throwing. And this is going to be. Out of bounds at the five yard line. Ellington, the grab. And once again, they throw Lamarcus <laughs> Farmer's way. Absolutely. And Dylan Thompson throws the deep ball once again. He loves to throw the deep ball. And this time, finding his in a nice rhythm back in the pocket. And you cannot throw a football any better than that. Bruce Ellington gets a step on Lamarcus Farmer. And that ball is placed perfectly on the outside shoulder of Ellington. A 43-yard pass play. First and goal from the six. Touchdown. Dylan Thompson. Looking like a little uh, Connor Shaw here. Connor Shaw known for running this little zone replay. They fake it in there to Marcus Lattimore, obviously going to get the attention of the UAB defense. And Dylan Thompson just pulls it out of the belly of Marcus Lattimore and goes around the left end untouched. A drive that saw one interception nullified by penalty and another just a flat-out drop, <laughs> and the Gamecocks get a touchdown. And the extra point pushes the score to 28-6. to six. Dive out of Columbia. 12.57 remaining, third quarter. The Gamecocks get a touchdown from Dylan Thompson. Good James Bates story. <laughs> or, or two. One or two. <laughs> I know James Bates up. has about 100 good Steve Spurrier <laughs> stories, and we hear them all the time on the show. This is Bruce Ellington. And out of the game, obviously out of the pads, and that right shoulder getting some ice. We'll check on that as UAB will UAB down it in the end zone. It looked like line. Ellington, as he caught that long pass, was wrestled out of bounds, and we're not sure if he was injured on that particular play. Well, we'll take a look at the, the end of the play here. You see he's getting rustled out of bounds. He's fighting for extra yardage right there. He comes down right on that right shoulder, all of his weight on it. You can see he gets up, and he's a little excited after the play, but not sure if it happened there or on the run that he had earlier in that possession. When we get an update, we'll certainly pass 28-6, South Carolina. Nowhere to run back to the 25 yard line as Greg Franklin was the ball carrier. Shaq Wilson made the tackle, but a penalty flag. After the play was over, personal foul, number 47 of the defense. The penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. And that is the first South Carolina penalty of the game. Reggie Bowen's the guilty party. That will advance the ball to the 40 yard line. First 
first and ten Blazers. Perry throws, and that's going to be knocked down. And this is something that, Tim, we've been waiting to see how the defensive ends would disrupt it. Devin Taylor is six feet eight. And then when he jumps with that wingspan, I mean, he's just a massive guy. And Jonathan Perry only stands six foot two. He's trying to throw a little hitch route to the outside. And it's almost like an eclipse coming up right there. Devin Taylor getting that big wingspan and batting that ball down. Full eclipse. <laughs> Full eclipse, yeah. <laughs> Second and ten. Through the sideline and complete. Jay Davis. Jay Davis on the reception. Jack Wilson on coverage. Game to the 45. Five yard pickup. Third and five coming. Complete for Jackie Williams. Pass intended for Jackie Williams is incomplete. That's what, that's what Gary McGee was talking about, missing open throws down the field. But you see South Carolina has a package here. They're in four defensive end. This is their rabbit package where they're able to get speed out on the field. They bring in Aldrich Fordham and Chaz Sutton on this, along with Devin Taylor and Jadavion Cloudy in obvious passing down situations, third and four, five or more. They'll bring those four defensive ends and get four defensive ends in and bring pressure on the quarterback. Hunter Mullins will punt. A Sanders ready on the return. Into the end zone for the touchback. A 55-yard punt. 12 minutes and 7 seconds remaining. Third quarter in Columbia. Number 8, South Carolina leading 28-6. to six. Shoulder sprain. I walked by him just now. He has ice on it. That's all the training staff could give me. You know, I'll definitely keep you posted. Bruce Ellington, though, is such an incredible athlete. This is the second straight year he will be a two-sport athlete here playing basketball and football. Last year, he was a member of the SEC All-Freshman team in both sports. No big deal, right? He says it's been great going back and forth, but he's had to increase his time with basketball to become more familiar with the new coaching staff under Frank Martin and the system. Frank Martin was out here earlier before the game started with his team. Guys, you met Frank Martin. What were your first impressions? He is a bundle of energy <laughs> and ready to tackle his new challenge to resurrect Gamecock basketball. No question, a lot of intensity from Frank Martin. He kind of told us, hey, I coach basketball like a football coach. He brings a lot of intensity to the hardwood. <laughs> Frank, you'll fit right in Absolutely. in the SEC. 28 to six. First and 10. Adam Rokas. Marcus. Marcus Lattimore. It is so, well, the ball pops out. Taken away by UAB. This is a live ball, and Greg Urban has it for the Blazers. Now, let's see if it's going let's to stand. Happens. We've got a couple officials on the sideline here waving their arms. Take a look at the replay. See if we can see when the football comes out. Yeah, oh, that ball's out. Right that ball's out. Yes, yeah. Marcus is laying on top of some defenders from UAB. Knee never touches the ground, and the ball comes out. Can't see it as good from that angle, but the other angle shows pretty clearly that the football was out while his legs were extended up in the air on top of a UAB player. Here's a better look at it. See the football bouncing out right there. And then it squirts out into the waiting hands of Greg Urban, UAB. Football first and ten. And a completed pass to the near side. A grab made by Nick Adams. Nick Adams off looking at Greg Irvin, the senior from Demopolis, Alabama. Plays that same linebacker spot. Perches with the fumble recovery. At the Gamecock 18. Second and four. Perry. Pressure coming. Throwing down the sideline. It's intercepted at the three-yard line. DJ gets another one. There is a penalty flag in front of the UAB bench. Oh. Referee 
is huddling. If it stands, it's Swearinger's second interception and the sixth of his career. There is a play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 21. The penalty is half the business in the goal and includes an automatic first down. That's Devontae Holloman with a roughing the passer. Unfortunate to get. See how he gets him here. It looks like he's just trying to block. He thinks DJ Swearinger is going to try to run that football out of the end zone and just forces Jonathan Perry out of bounds. This is the forced throw from Jonathan Perry. They tried to work a screen to the other side and nothing was over there. They tried to work it to Nick Adams and he comes back this way and forces it, but there was no return on the play. Swearinger went down when he caught the football and that's why they get the, the late hit on uh, Holloman. He just forced Perry out of bounds because there was no return on the play. First and goal, Blazers from the nine yard line. On the reverse. One yard. And J.J. Nelson pounded down at the eight. Devin Taylor. And a great play by Shaq Wilson that time as well. A lot of misdirection going on in the backfield, trying to get the South Carolina defense to flow to the left. They bring the end around with J.J. Nelson, but Shaq Wilson stayed at home, made a great play. Second and goal. Perry throws over the middle, complete to the five, and that's it. Progress for Jackie Williams. They'll mark it at the five-yard line. It's going to be third and goal, and we've got a lot of pushing and shoving after the play. DJ Swearingen right in the middle of it. Swearinger and then number 76 from UAB, Brian O'Leary. A little pushing and shoving going on. South Carolina's fired up right now. Swearinger getting this crowd riled up. Third and goal. Inside the five. Bernard Backman, the intended receiver. It will be fourth down. Looks like Perry missed another throw that time. Kennard Backman working in the end zone right here. He got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the strong safety, and the throw was just behind him. He had him. If he puts that football out in front of him, he's able to make that catch for a touchdown throw just behind him, and that's what Garrick McGee is talking about. Accuracy on these short throws from Jonathan Perry has to improve. Blazers looking for six. Pull out rush. Incomplete. Nearly intercepted. South Carolina ball, and that pass had no chance of being completed. It did not, and Devin Taylor paused that throw. He wanted to throw the wheel route out there to the running back, number five, Darren Reese. But you see the pressure from South Carolina. Shaq Wilson in there also, and Jonathan Perry is very, very fortunate that that ball is not being ran back down the sideline right now. That was my touchdown. That was Victor Hampton out there playing that cornerback spot, playing his responsibility to perfection. the Gamecocks from their own five-yard line with a 27 to play in the third. Nothing fancy for Kenny Miles. And the Blazers trying to wrestle the ball away. Marvin Burnett the tackle. No gain. Second and ten. Once again, another drive stalls for UAB. Another opportunity. They had several in the first half. They had a turnover on one. They had penalties on an, on a couple other drives. That time, they're able to get it down to the five yard line and still walk away with no Turn points down. on the board. Miles, you can't get anything going tonight. That is their fourth carry. No yards. Doctor number six report to Upper East First Aid. Seven thirty-five and counting in the third. 
So can the Blazers come up with a big defensive play on third and ten? See what they do here down here. We've got South Carolina backed up. Will they try to heat up and bring the pressure on Dylan Thompson? Looks like they got a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. Thompson throws. A lot of hand time, and it's complete. And this one is going to go for the touchdown. Demir Burr, they'll never catch him. Gamecocks, touchdown. Thompson finds a one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's right here. It's Demir Bird working against Cornelius Richards. It's just a go route. It's good protection. It's max protection. And Cornelius Richards falls down, falls down on the play. He tries to look back into the backfield to locate the football, but Demir Bird is hit in perfect stride on the throw by Dylan Thompson. Outstanding pitch and catch. Now I'm telling you, Thompson can throw the deep ball really really well we watched him on film Bobby walked away very impressed with some of the throws he made last week and that football right there was placed perfectly to Bird. and the speed man Bird. once he caught it it was history and its lead now to 35 to 6. Incox ready to kick it will be brought out to the 25. Go back and take a look at the touchdown and how and show you how Demir Bird was able to get so wide open. You see him at the bottom of the screen. He's just locked up in one on one coverage. There's no safety help over the top for number 28. Richards a great protection by the offensive line. Thompson able to step in that throw and right here. Richards falls down on the play trying to locate the football in the backfield and that's why you saw Bird able just to cruise into the end zone for that 94 yard touchdown throw and catch. Our Z Max performance play of the game. UAB throws Franklin with the grab, tight ropes the sideline, and is pushed out for a first Greg down Franklin. at the 37. Greg Franklin, the junior from Marietta, Georgia, was UAB's first leading rusher UAB. last season, and makes the pass catch here to give the Blazers a 12 yard gain. Dropped and it was a forward pass incomplete. Pass intended for this one intended for JJ Nelson. He's trying to get something going with the screen game. They faked a little inside handoff to Franklin. Had a nice block out on the outside. Nelson may have been able to do something with that football if he was, if he was able to hang on to it. Nelson, a red shirt sophomore. Midfield Alabama made one grab two weeks ago against Troy. It was a 24 yard touchdown. Apparently 16 for 31 for 192 yards. Incomplete. Intended for Backman. Pass intended for Bernard Backman. And Perry going back in that 98 mile an hour fastball. <laughs> he did, and, that, and DJ Swearinger read it all the way. Swearinger coming down from that free safety position. It was bracket coverage, I mean double coverage on Kennard Backman. He had one on one on the outside. When you see that safety come down, have to work to the outside receivers. Perry forced that throw a little bit. Blazers four for 13 on third down, 31% conversion rate. And Cloudy! Almost decapitated him. Take a look at Clowney out of the bottom of the screen down here, and he's going to shoot out of this thing like a sprinter. And the speed, to see the shoulder dip right there, the tackle is never able to get a hand on him, and that is what everyone in the NFL can't wait to get their hands on this kid. To just the ability not only to get up the field with speed, but the ability to dip that shoulder, the body control, the strength, just to get to the quarterback. And that's what they've talked about with the technique that he's improved on all offseason. That was one of the new moves that he's learned during the offseason. It's going to be scary for the SEC this year to try to block that guy. And a penalty coming on the kick. Walking the kicker coming against South Carolina. This return 
Back to the UAB 42-yard line. There's a second flag thrown as Sanders is slow to get to his feet. A penalty back on the kick for roughing, and then another penalty on the return. Ken Williamson is the referee tonight. 41-yard punt, 28-yard return. There are two fouls on the play. During return, block in the back, receiving team number three. That penalty's declined. We also have roughing the kicker on the defense. Automatic first down. The head ball coach's <laughs> facial expression tells the story. Not happy about that. Let's go back. It's a fumble snap a little bit, and I think that's kind of what throws the timing off. Just shoots in there and he goes low onto the punter. He can't do that. And a fourth down and 17 gives UAB new life offensively. That turns into a first and 10. UAB. Under six minutes to play in the third quarter. At the From the 44 yard line, Reeves in motion. This is going to be a penalty against South Carolina and Swearinger. This is going to be a targeting penalty. Her and the intended receiver. And a good call by the officials. It was absolutely targeting. We'll see what they say here as far as they think it was intentional or not. But anytime you go high like that. Personal foul. Defense number 36. Contact above the shoulder. Fans are booing, the fans don't like it, but that's what's going to be called in college football this year. We've seen a few plays that are questionable right there. It's clear, oh, yeah. helmet to helmet on that one. There's no argument about that one. Watch DJ Swearinger launch into the wide receiver, Patrick Hearn, and it is face mask to face mask, a dangerous hit. That's the play they're trying to get out of college football. Excellent call by the officials. Long bomb down the sideline, incomplete. Hearn, the intended receiver. Second and ten. We did see the league go back and review the tape last week and suspend Ole Miss Trey Elston for a game this week against Texas for the helmet-to-helmet -helmet targeting contact. Perry, that hole closed quickly. Nice job to get outside. And he takes it down to the 32-yard line. Of the keeper, Brunchy, Gain of nine and a half. For Carolina. Design quarterback draw on that play and an excellent block by the running back, number five, Darren Reeves, to Spring Perry. So third down and in inches. As Jonathan Perry gets his Blazers set. And Perry's got the first down. Progress to the 29. Reggie Bowen's the tackle. Tackles him for Carolina. It's a UAB first down. For the Gamecocks, Kelsey Quarles comes off. There he has time. And this ball is caught at the two-yard line. Oh, a circus grab by Pat Hearn. Finally, they, yard game. finally, they connect on a throw down the field. Jonathan Perry able to find Patrick Hearn, but excellent protection in the backfield. The fullback, number 45, Sam Accorso, giving him time to deliver that football. And Patrick Hearn coming down with a, a very tough catch down around the goal line. Out goes Darren Reeves, shy of the goal line. Right there. Loss of one. 
See the pursuit down here on the goal line. A lot of speed for this South Carolina defense. DJ Swearinger, a guy we've called his name a lot tonight. He had the big fumble return for the touchdown earlier in the football game. Made a lot. He's made a lot of tackles flying around the football. UAB looking for its first touchdown. There's six points, the result of two field goals. Ninth play of the drive. Nowhere to run for Dontavious Jackson. Devin Taylor shut that one down. And Taylor is outstanding against the run. He's a great pass rusher, too, but you see him right here on the inside. He's able to slip the block and just get in the backfield. He's disruptive. We've talked about it all night how these guys haven't had a lot of hits on the quarterback tonight, but they're so disruptive. Batting balls down at the line of scrimmage, forcing the quarterback to throw before he's ready, and also hitting the running back in the backfield. Third and goal back at the four and a half. Jackson snowed under and driven back for a loss to the 11-yard line. Shaq Wilson, Davion Clowney. All the, all the guys, look at Taylor again, blow this thing up. He's the one that forces that into the backfield and allows his teammates to get there. Shaq Wilson, Davion Clowney, all the guys get there, but that thing is started by Devin Taylor taking that defense or that tight end to his side and driving him back into the backfield, forcing the running back to stop his feet. UAB, fourth and goal from the nine yard line. 0 for 2 on fourth downs tonight. 220 and counting, third quarter. Perry, Clowney grabs at him, tackled, and they lose the ball on down. Clowney started it, Fordham came in to help. South Carolina ball. Mr. Davion Clowney lined up against Casey Ike again out here on the outside. Watch him, he just goes and he uses speed, he uses power to get to Jonathan Perry. He's Forces that he shows up field, then he slides up underneath, just continues to stay with the play, and he's able to trip Perry up from behind, just showing his out, outstanding athletic ability and speed. It's the third time tonight that Clowney and company have stopped a UAB drive on downs in South Carolina territory. Marcus Lattimore. One man to beat. Penalty flag. Lattimore still going to the 24. Got a block in the back down the field here. And one of the wide receivers, not sure what number it was. During their turn, block in the back. Number 10 of the offense. Only is 10 yards. He's called a foul. He'll be first down. Flags thrown at the 47 of UA. Let's go back and look what how Marcus Lattimore was able to spring. It's a fake reverse in the backfield. See Lattimore show the ball right there. Try to get the flow of the defense, and it's just a well-blocked play. A huge hole for Marcus Lattimore, and he shows he still has the speed. You know, people talk about the knee injury, the knee brace, but he's showing a lot of speed, the cutting ability. Unfortunately, it's going to come back. There's Nick Jones getting the shove in the back as Lattimore tries to cut off that block, but uh, nonetheless, an impressive run by Marcus Lattimore, showing he is healthy. South Carolina did not commit a penalty in the first half tonight. They've been flagged five times here in the third quarter. And a mile. Patrick Bastian on the stop for UAB. All spotted at the 43. No gain, second and 10. No gain, second and 10. Miles has five carries, one yard. Incomplete. Intended for Demir Bird. Elizabeth. Bob, thank you. Last weekend, there was an outpour of support for Dylan Thompson for his teammates. Before they got on the bus, a lot of them stopped by his hotel room to send him just a simple message. They said, we've got your back. 
Marcus Lattimore, his high school teammate and good friend, made a special visit to him, telling Thompson, remember who you're playing for, talking about God, a message Thompson shares daily with the team. That seemed to be just what Thompson needed. When I talked to Coach Spurry before the game. At the beginning of last week, he said he could see a switch change in him. There was a different look in his eyes, and it all stemmed from his confidence. Thompson waits, gets sacked. That time, UAB, the man who made the hit, is shaken up on the play. That time, Rab made the hit and then gets up limping. Let's see what happened. See Rab coming up here. He's working against number 53, Corey Robinson. Robinson tries to chop block him, but he just is able to stay on his feet oh, and get to Dylan Thompson. He kind of got hit by his own man. Yeah, he kind of ran into his own man. Punt coming by Tyler Hall. Jackie Williams waiting for UAB. Uh, hanger. No return. Time for our Regions Bank trivia question and answer tonight. We were talking about Coach Spurrier on the cusp of 200 career coaching wins in college football, 117 of them in SEC play. Which head coach has the most conference wins? The Bear. 159. Look at the great John Vaught, Vince Dooley, and that Centric Club. That's a lot of wins. Not a bad list to be on, is it, partner? I guess so. Austin Brown is the new quarterback for UAP. He was Connor Shaw's teammate at Flowery Branch High School. And nothing here. Another terrific play. Demario Jeffrey, number 33, the senior from here in Columbia. Mario Jeffrey, the linebacker, he just shot the A-gap right there. No one picked him up. He was able to get to Darren Reeves before he could get started. A loss of four brings the third quarter to an end. And our score in Columbia, South Carolina, on top, 35-6. These fellas used Capital One Bench. Beautiful williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, and the home team has taken firm control, 35 to 6, as we start the fourth quarter. Over 77,000 tonight to cheer on the Gamecocks as they look to go 3 and 0 on the new campaign. Bob Rathman, Tim Couch, Elizabeth Morrow, and our great crew, headed up by producer Jay Hoover and director Mike Miller, back with you as we start the final frame. Austin Brown. Carrying the ball, and this is something that has not worked at all. <laughs> Trying to run the ball against this impressive defensive front for South Carolina. Not at all, and they struggled to run the football also last week against Troy. Really, they only averaged three yards per carry in that game. They're struggling a whole bunch here tonight. They only have seven yards on the ground total in South Carolina defense. This front seven for South Carolina as good as any defensive front seven you'll see in the country. UAB has 10 rushing yards. South Carolina started the night 15th nationally allowing only 66 rushing yards per game. And another sack back at the 20. Jazz Sutton number 90. Clowney in there as well. Loss of seven. That's that rabbit package we were talking about. Four defensive ends on the field. They bring Chaz Sutton in as an extra rusher, and that is a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and it gives you great ability. You only have to rush four guys. You can sit back in coverage because there's so many good pass rushers on the field for that Gamecock defense. They're able to get pressure with just bringing four guys. UAB forced a punt on fourth and long. The South Carolina D has been terrific as they once again have been impenetrable in the red zone. It turns a touchdown. Look at this return here by A. Sanders. Whoa, and they're going to draw a flag. Fans are screaming. Coaches are screaming. Was there a horse collar out of bounds? Let's see. Sure looked like it to me. Thirty-five yard return. Take a look at the replay. Sanders just is able to get outside 
on the punt return. Nice blocking. They set up a nice wall for him, and he gets the big return. He sees contact coming. He's out of bounds, clearly. We see a guy rolling on his knees and maybe a little horse collar there, a little late, out of bounds. And it appears they've picked up the flag. First and 10 at the UAB 30-yard line for Dylan Thompson in South Carolina. Throw to the end zone. Touchdown. Shaq Rowland. the latest perhaps in the long line of South Carolina Mr. Footballs to come to Columbia the red shirt freshman Shaq Rowland it's his name into the scoring column Dylan Thompson continues to impress throwing the football down the field I know Spurrier likes that he's tried to look for that all since he's been in South Carolina someone to throw it down the field throw it accurately down the field. he's found it in Dylan Thompson a 30 yard touchdown pass Carolina ups the lead to 42 to 6. A lot of weapons on the South Carolina receiving core. No doubt about it. And a, and a big confidence builder for Shaq Rowland. We saw him drop a couple passes last week against East Carolina. So good for his confidence to come out here and catch this touchdown tonight. Touchback. Let's go back and take a look at that play. A great play call by Steve Sperrier. You see the Shaq Rowland is right here. They're going to run a double post route right here, putting this pressure on the safety. He's going to jump the first post, and a great read by Dylan Thompson to come over the top, finding Shaq Rowland in the end zone for a touchdown. That's a sophomore quarterback throw into a true freshman wide receiver. Excellent play by those two young men. Forty-two to six, South Carolina. UAB comes out at the 25, first and 10. Austin Brown has taken over at quarterback. And the give is to Richard Coles, and he finds out what his teammates have been living all night long. Let's take a look at our Wendy's first tonight. And Steve Spurrier has been just remarkable in bringing greatness to a South Carolina program that quite frankly had had very little in its football history a 1969 ACC championship but look at all these Wendy's first under coach Spurrier it's a phenomenal run for coach Spurrier here in South Carolina and as we talked about earlier in the show it's been about recruiting he's been able to get these top guys in the state to come here and that's how you start getting things like having 11 win seasons and you start having guys like Lattimore and Clowney and these type of guys. They build your program and Spurrier is able to get these guys here and do an amazing job in a short period of time here at South Carolina. They've won 11 games in a season once, 10 wins in a season twice, 9 wins in a season twice in over a, well over 100 years of football. <laughs> goes. Austin Brown feeling the pain brought by Byron Gerardo. Look at the size of this guy folks. 6'1", 316 when he was in high school just for sport he would lift up small cars and move around the parking lot. Yeah what, what are the look at this face mask. How about that? Now that's some intensity that. right there. This guy in the weight room. How about this Bob? 670 pound squat and a 500 pound bench press. It's He's like, what's he practice on like a Greyhound bus? <laughs> I guess so. One of the strongest players in the history of the South Carolina program. And the return continues. A terrific job this time by Victor Hampton. As he was bottled up. Girardeau and his grill. 42 to 6, South Carolina. Seth Strickland. 
out of Lawrence, South Carolina. One for three, 51 yards so far this season. He's very trying to get some of the second third teamers out there. Mike Davis is the ball carrier. And a great burst of speed to take it to the UAB 36. You called it nice burst of speed from Mike Davis, five foot nine freshman, showing some nice ability, to able to get get off some tacklers, hurdling some guys, able to get down the field, showing some nice speed for the young guy. True freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. Brooklyn throws, nice ball, caught, 10, 5, and out of bounds. Jarrell Adams, another freshman from Pinewood, South Carolina. 6'6", 224. Good looking tight end. You see the crossing route. Here he is running right here on the crossing route. They just lose him in coverage. He's wide open. The safety is supposed to be down there. You see him coming over late. He's able to get up, get over and bumping out of bump him out of bounds. But uh, just a lack of communication and coverage. Adams running wide open in that UAB secondary. First and goal for the Gamecocks. going to be a touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And loving every second of it is Mike Davis. His first Gamecock six-pointer. South Carolina makes it look easy on this drive. Two long, a long run by Mike Davis. Then the long pass by Seth Strickland, and he just punches it in. Mike Davis does down on the goal line for his first career touchdown. Landon Ard is going to try the PAT. He's one for one this season. Freshman from Rock Hill. Perfect. 10.05 to play. Number eight, South Carolina now on cruise control, leading UAB 49 to 6. Mike Davis, a three-yard touchdown run for his first Gamecock score. Adam Yates tees it up. And another kick return coming for the Blazers of UAB. And this goes out of bounds, so the penalty. Flag is thrown against South Carolina. A lot of talent, of course, here at the University of South Carolina, this football program, and some interesting stories to the way they got here. You're looking at defensive coordinator Lorenzo Ward. Kick out of bounds. Receiving team is elected to put the ball in play at the 35-yard line. First and for down. more on the story, let's go down to the field and Elizabeth. Bob, thank you. Yesterday when we met with defensive coordinator Lorenzo Ward, he was going through his defense. When he reached Javadion Clowney's name, he sort of stopped. His eyes lit up a little bit, and he went on to tell us the story of how he recruited him. He went to Rock Hill to Clowney's High School, waited patiently in the counseling office. The first thing out of Coach Ward mouth was a question. He asked Clowney if he knew who Mariano Rivera was. Jadavian said, no. Ward's response, well, he's arguably the best closer in baseball. Jadavian said, so you're a good closer? Absolutely, Coach Ward said, and after that, they just sort of connected. Clowney was the guy that you could barely get on the phone during the recruiting process. Coach Ward told him, if you want to you want to talk to me, you can call me. That's exactly what Clowney did. They hit it off right from the start. Coach Ward says it's been that way ever since. That's a great story. And uh, Lorenzo Ward taking over as the defensive coordinator as Ellis Johnson moved on to become the head coach at Southern Miss. This is a guy who was a big time hitter at Alabama. He's trying to get to the outside, Austin Brown knocked out of bounds and the helmet came off. And Lorenzo Ward moving up after three years of working with the DBs. He too spent one year at Arkansas. As an assistant coach, he's been here since 2008. 
And he has got a terrific defense, rock ribbed up front and in that linebacking core. No question, that front seven is good as any in the country. The only question marks about this defense is in the secondary. They've given up some passing yardage in the first couple games of the season, but a lot, lot better. As you see, as the season goes on, a lot better communication on the back end in the secondary. DJ Swearinger, a big game here tonight. He's the leader. He's going to be the one to get that group going. Jimmy Legree also playing well. Helmet roll forcing Jonathan Curry back in. And once again, this South Carolina rushing defense has uh, really tightened up in the second half. Bowen's another tackle. UAB's at nine yards for the night rushing on 36 carries. Wow. UAB was moving Tim between the 20s pretty well in the first half, but nothing here in the second. No, not at all. This South Carolina defense, you can tell they come out here in the second half. They, they've shown a lot of pride, and they've bucked up. They've had a couple goal line stands here in this second half, and almost another pick there, but a good throw by Austin Brown. And a nice catch by Jackie Williams. He was running for his life, was Brown. Jackie Williams with the reception brings up fourth down. But it will be fourth down for UAB with 8.25 remaining in the game. From the 50. Rather dramatic turn in the UAB yardage from first half to second. Yeah, no question. The first half, UAB had 178 yards. In the second half, only 62. South Carolina, 287 yards already in the second half. This punt will go out of bounds. They will mark it at the three-yard yard line. Three yard line for the and now it is time for our O'Charlies fans of the game. <laughs> Featuring the younger set tonight. <laughs> Having a good time. Great crowd to watch the Gamecocks here tonight. Over 77,000 here at williams Bryce Stadium. So backed up shadows of their own goalposts. The Gamecocks, first and ten from the three. Davis. Out to the 14. This young man, five foot nine, but a powerfully built 216 pounds. Absolutely, and it's showing out on the field. Showing a nice burst, able to get past the line of scrimmage and move the pile at the end, showing good leg drive also. Good-looking young running back. Gain of 11. First and 10. Absorb the contact. He's a football player. That to the UAB 36. Mike Davis continues to impress. Coming off his own goal line, running the football hard. You see the burst and outstanding blocking from that offensive line. A few second team guys in there and a big shot by one of the wide receivers coming in there at the end. That was number four, Shaq Rowland. Davis. After the 50-yard game, now has 84 yards on four carries. And the play clock expired. Play of game, offense, number 15, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Andrew Clifford is the new Gamecock quarterback. We are having to go deep in our depth chart. Mr. Couch. No doubt about it. Junior from Tampa, Florida.
running play gets the football to the 35 yard line. Blair Lowry on the carry. And this ball carrier is Blair Lowry. He's a senior from Irmo, South Carolina. Six yard game. Marvin Burnett, the stop for UAB. Second down. Second and nine. Quarterback will keep it. Whoa, and that helmet went flying. Calvin Jones was the man who applied the hit. Calvin Jones, number 11, coming up from his safety position, puts the big hit on Andrew Clifford at the end of this run. Looked like he was trying to get down right there. He had a guy hanging on his legs, but Clifford comes in. And delivered, sorry, not Clifford, Clifford the quarterback, but number 11, Calvin Jones, comes in, delivers a big shot at the end of that play. Seth Strickland comes back in. The helmet. Swing it. Outside and a gain to the 19-yard line. That is a six-yard pickup for Lowry. Another clean jersey coming in. Joshua Blue, tailback. Tatum, South Carolina. Andrew Clifford back in at quarterback. Five minutes remaining. <laughs> to the 18. Take a look at our principal financial group edge of the game tonight. And rushing yardage, only 11 for UAB. Just going to struggle against the South Carolina defense when you're so one-dimensional like that, you just can't, can't run the football, only 11 yards. Those big defensive linemen from South Carolina, they know you have to throw it. They're going to pin their ears back and come after the quarterback. So almost an un in impossible situation for Jonathan Perry to get anything done in the passing game. for the quarterback. Looks to throw toward the end zone. Incomplete. Looking for Shaq Rowland. 4.02 left. Brings up fourth down. So the Gamecocks will get set for the Missouri Tigers. In their second SEC East matchup after winning at Vandy on opening night. The Gamecocks. Field goal attempt coming. And for Adam Yates, a 36-yarder. And this one is no good. So that keeps it at 49 to 6 with 357 left. Let's take a look at our Coors Light freeze cam. If you were with us earlier, you got to see. An incredible play turned in by the Gamecocks and D.J. Swearinger. Here's D.J. Swearinger. He just comes off that safety position on a safety blitz on the outside. He's just trying to get to the quarterback, and the football flies out of Jonathan Perry's hands and hits D.J. Swearinger right in stride. He's able to take it on in for the South Carolina touchdown. <laughs> he went from 0 to 60. <laughs> he did. <laughs> About 1.2. I think it shocked him a little bit that he realized he had the football in his hand there and uh, just kind of hit him as he was making his move to rush the quarterback and caught it in full stride. UAB with it, Austin Brown at quarterback. And a handoff to Coles. Redshirt freshman from Tucker, Georgia. Gain of a couple of yards. DJ's had a big night tonight. Loves to hit. We saw that. We did see that, yeah. He, you, know, you wonder if he's going to hear from the league on that hit because we saw a hit, as you mentioned last week in the Ole Miss game, where it was, it was not as vicious and not as obvious it hit to the head. Flagged, and initially. it wasn't even flagged in the game, and we saw a, an ejection for that one for the uh, for the following week. So we wonder uh, you know, what may happen to D.J. Swearinger when the league reviews that play. Cole. 
still going. Second and third effort. It's about to the about the 35 yard line. Both of the Caribbean UAB. Well, we talked about the Gamecocks, and with the way the schedule runs, this Missouri game starts the streak through Arkansas November 10th of seven consecutive SEC games. The end of the year is two non-conference games, Walford here, and then the traditional closer this year, it's at Clemson. This is a tough schedule. Number seven, Georgia, LSU, and then Florida with a big Ooh. victory over Tennessee in Knoxville today. A tough run for the Gamecocks as far as their schedule goes. Coles, helmet pops off. He has to stop. And he'll come out with 233 to play. And South Carolina's Your looking at Missouri here. with the knowledge that they've got to go through another week not knowing whether Connor Shore can play. No doubt about it. And one thing comforting for Coach Spurrier is he's seen Dylan Thompson the last couple weeks come in and play really well. He only completed 50% of his passes tonight. He missed a couple throws, overthrew a couple balls. But once he settled into the game and got acclimated to the speed, he threw some great deep balls. We saw the 94-yard touchdown pass and threw some nice footballs down the field. So I know Coach Spurrier has a lot of confidence in Dylan Thompson going forward. Certainly they want Connor Shaw healthy and back in the game. Connor's won nine out of his ten starts here in South Carolina. But uh, if he's banged up and can't go, they have a lot of confidence in Dylan Thompson. Catch is made for a first down to the 45. And here's the play that knocked Shaw out of the game. Well, as Coach Spurrier said, that was his best throw of the day. A great ball to... Ellington out on the corner route, but just a hit right on that shoulder. And that's what everyone was concerned about when they decided to play Connor in this football game. And, you know, you wonder if, you know, another week off and rest would heal that shoulder and he'd be ready to go for SEC play. But they decide to start him tonight. And unfortunately for Connor, he takes a hit right on that injured shoulder. Relentless pursuit up front. <laughs> Crystal game summary. UAB had 20 no more snaps. Perry ends up 17 of 34 for 219. And DJ, three tackles and the fumble recovery for the touchdown. Perry had an opportunity to have a big night. He missed a lot of throws down the field. Guys were open, as Coach McGee mentioned telling Elizabeth at halftime there were a lot of guys open in that South Carolina secondary and Perry couldn't get him the football and, and one of the reasons for that was that defensive line we talked about they didn't sack him a lot but they did disrupt things with Clowney and Taylor forcing him to throw balls when he wasn't ready to throw them and force Aaron throws down the field play clock Lamb game offense number 11 five yard penalty it remains second down So to delay a game penalty, there'll be a 10-second runoff here. Clock to stop inside of a minute in the fourth quarter. to be a 10-second subtraction for the game clock. Three seconds on the game clock. And the game clock has to be set to 33 seconds. to the 41. UAB drops to 0-2, and they have to go to Ohio State next weekend before opening Conference USA play. Steve Spurrier heads across the field to shake the hand of UAB head coach Garrick McGee. And South Carolina is now 3-0. The final is on the board here in Columbia. The Gamecocks, 49, and UAB, 6. The Gamecocks, very impressively, after subpar first quarter, win it going away. Here's Elizabeth with Coach Spurrier. Coach, I heard a rumor that your wife made you a cake for your 200th career win. Pretty big milestone. 
What does it mean? I think she would wait till Monday to make that cake. Well, we don't take anything for granted. Uh, but it was a it was a closer game than the score. Uh, they played us tough early. We were fortunate we got some breaks, or it, it could have been a struggle. Devin Taylor sometimes is overlooked publicity wise with Clowney in there, but no less important to your defense. What, yeah. How is he so good? Yeah, he's disruptive. He's a heck of a player. We all know that. He and Devin Taylor is awfully good too. Yeah, our defense gave up some yards, but we were very good down around the end zone there. Thank you, coach. Congratulations. Good to get this one behind us. We'll start conference stuff again next week. Thanks, coach. So congratulations to Steve Spurrier, becomes the fourth active coach with 200 collegiate wins. We'll be back with more coverage from Columbia in just a moment. Final score, Gamecocks 49, UAB 6.